No creatures died. You can sack it though, right? Just mitigating a bit of the damage. We get the land, good game. Oh my lord. So good. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. We're chilling within Mythic today, 751. Amonkhet Remastered just hit Arena. We have a ton of new cards to be farming. We can buy packs, play seals, play drafts. So no matter which way you want to go to be getting these cards, you can get there. Rotation season hits in September. We're getting close to that. This will be the second rotation season within Arena. So the historic card pool is getting massive. Um, and I think this will become the dominant uh, queue within Arena as we progress. However, for those of you just starting out, you may struggle to get into the historic pool because it is so vast uh, and you don't have quite the card pool to get there. So. We are talking standard today, and Wizards was nice enough to release 15 new free-to-play decks to you guys. Uh, and we're going to go through and upgrade these decks within the following week or two, incorporating rares and mythics that you will only use uh, within top meta decks. We don't want you guys spending your wild cards or trying to farm for wild cards uh, that you will not use in other top meta decks. These decks are great. They're good entry, but they're not going to get you into the top mythic rank right we're going to need to be using those top tiered one decks to get there so to do so we're going to be using these decks to farm and my other free to play budget decks be sure to check those out as well however uh lots of you don't have the uncommons for that yet so this is a great start uh, and i want to show you guys some potential upgrade guys for each of these decks to make them more competitive get you farming cards uh, at an expedited rate maybe even competing in some of those uh constructed and historic events so with that being said if you find any value within this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share the channel out to a friend if you've been enjoying any content on the channel i encourage you to go ahead and subscribe it's a great free way to support me along this journey we've got everything from free to play budget beginner guides uh just general magic the gathering arena beginner guides talking about uh the principles and archetypes behind this amazing game, some of the top ranked standard decks, the best historic decks, great original brawl decks, and some tools and tips. And then we even have a little bit of limited. So no matter what you're into within Magic the Gathering Arena, we have you covered. Subscribe to the channel, join for your chance to win up to 500,000 gems. Make sure to check out our Discord and enjoy this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. And thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game playing Mutation Station today, which is one of the new starter decks within Magic the Gathering Arena for the new player experience. Uh, and I think these decks are great. You get 15 brand new decks that have some rares, some mythics in them to help you start building your collection within Magic the Gathering Arena. This is a Mute deck, um, so there's a lot of cool things going on with that mechanic, which was introduced to us in Ikoria. Mutate allows creature cards to be played onto a, another non-human creature card uh, to gain the respective abilities of that mutate effect. And then sometimes there are triggers for the amount of times you've mutated. So that is what Mutate is about. We have the free-to-play deck list pulled up here for you guys. We're going to take a look at it really quick, talk about it. Then we'll get into my upgraded version of the deck list where I've started to incorporate it, uh, or started to incorporate some rares and some mythics, maybe adjusting the levels of commons and uncommons within the deck to not only increase the consistency, but the competitiveness of the deck as well. So you can start um, utilizing all of these free to play decks um, without going out of your way to spend sometimes up to 60 wild cards on some of these top tier decks, right? So we're trying to make the new player experience as friendly as possible for you guys. After we take a look at the upgraded deck list, we'll break down the strategy of that deck, 
Then we will watch some gameplay footage where we break down any play lines and interactions so you can learn how the deck interacts with the rest of the environment or the meta. Finally, we have my closing thoughts where we've got, um, you know, channel plans for the future, etc, etc. So Mutation Station is pretty cool. Um, and again, I think these decks are quite powerful for what you're getting. You know, it's free and these are actually semi-competitive, especially when we start upgrading them. And I think they're a lot better than the previous set of starter decks that we had within Arena. So that's great news for beginners. I mentioned how the deck revolves around mutates. I'm not going to talk about every single card within this deck because you all have access to it. And I'm sure you've already been playing this list in the play queue, maybe trying it out in a ranked. So you're going to have a, a general idea of how it works. So we're just going to do a quick overview and then we'll get into a more in-depth uh, view of the upgraded version instead, right? So again, mutate triggers, drawing cards, having your opponent sacrifice their creatures, and then direct damage and life gain effects. These are some of the things that we can expect to see within blue and black. Blue can bounce permanents, blue can tap permanents, black can have damage and life gain, and it can have sacrifice and destroy effects, right? And we see all of those incorporated within this deck, which is really, really cool. Um, again, for example, the Sea Dasher Octopus, draw a card, Tome Raider, draw a card, Baby Godzilla or Poliwag Symbiote, helps you draw a card, discard a card, uh, the Arc Plagor taps your opponent's creatures, Pouncing Shore Shark bounces your opponent's creatures. Dreamtail Heron draws cards. Chittering Harvest sacrifices creatures. Right, we've got Life Gain and Death Touch through our Boot Nipper. More Life Gain through our Unexpected Fangs. Uh, so again, you can see how we have lots of draw and lots of removal incorporated within the deck. That's the general strategy or I guess um, synergies of the deck. The strategy here is to stack your mutate as high as you can. There's some really cool ways uh, to go about this. My favorite mutate card within the deck has to be broken up between either the insatiable Hemophage. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. This is a stackable ability. So for each uh, Hemophage that we have on the mutate stack, that ability will trigger. So if we've mutated three times, already we put the hemophage on it's gonna deal four damage gain you four life next turn we put a second hemophage on they both deal five damage and they both gain five life so you can see just how powerful that can be pouncing shore shark this is you know just amazing in so many matches this is going to win you games whenever this creature mutates you you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand so this really helps us uh, keep field presence if we are attacking you know, with our flyers, which we do have access to, and our opponent has something with reach, something with flying, that's a great target to bounce. Again, this is a stackable ability. So if we have two Pouncing Shore Sharks, and then we mutate on top of them both, both of them trigger, so we'll be bouncing two of our opponent's uh, creatures that way. So those are my favorite uh, routes throughout the deck. Obviously, the Harvester to Sacrifice is really cool as well and actually synergizes with the Shore Shark really good because you can bounce one creature and then he has to sacrifice the other. So that's quite interesting as well. The deck list does change uh, quite a bit in all honesty. There's some dead cards in here that I don't really find valuable, like the Cocoon, like the Unexpected Fangs, Rookie Mistake. So, um, you know, these are just kind of dead cards in my opinion. And then we've got some things like Tome Raider, which we just replace with something that's strictly better than, right? So this is the free-to-play deck list. Again, we get a Scry Land out of this, which is really, really cool. As a new player to Magic the Gathering Arena, these rare lands, the Dual Lands, the Scry Lands, the Shock Lands, the Tap Lands, the Triumphs, the Fable Passages are all very, very high value and will allow you to go from playing the monocolor decks into playing the two and three color decks consistently and competitively. So with this Mutation Station starter deck out of the way, let's get into my upgraded version here, which is incredibly powerful and a lot of fun to play. 
Typically, I don't play Mutate unless I can play the Auspicious Sterix because, you know, it's just absolutely busted. However, you know, this works better than I thought it would and honestly, just as good um, for a few reasons. Now, let's first break down the deck list before we get into the reasons why I think it's, uh, or at least holds its own ground. I, I don't want to say that it's better than, but it definitely is able to hold its own. So Mutation Station has two copies of Stern Dismissal still. This was in our original deck list. It's a one drop instant speed target creature uh, or enchantment goes back to its owner's hand, which is awesome. Fairy Vandal. This is our first two drop. It's a one two with flash and flying. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Fairy Vandal. Four copies of Polywag Symbiote or Baby Godzilla Ruin Reborn. Uh, it's only Baby Godzilla if you have the alternative art. Uh, we did have some confusion there. So if you're looking just for the card, it's Polywag Symbiote. Four copies of this. It's a 1-3. And each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has Mutate. And this is not only reducing the cost of the Mutate creature, but of the Mutate spell or effect as well. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has Mutate, draw a card and then discard a card. Two copies of Boot Nipper. We talked about this. This is in main deck as well. It's a 2-1, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to choose Death Touch or Lifelink. Three copies of Eliminate, Instant Speed, Destroy Target Creature or Planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. Four copies of Sea Dasher Octopus. Now, the main deck only had one. This is one of our upgrades here where we're bringing three additional copies in to increase the consistency of it. It's a 2-2 with Flash, Mutate for two. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Into our four drops, a single copy of Atris Oracle of Half-Truths. This is one of the rares that the deck came with. Yes, it does not work with the deck. However, free-to-play individuals and new beginners are not going to have a ton of rares, right? They're not going to have the Sea Dasher Octopus to bump up to four copies, for example. Um, so they're going to want to keep what cards they have available to them. And the power level in some of these rares is still high enough to justify keeping them in the deck even though they do not really conform with the deck's overall strategy and synergy. So Atris is a great rare for your collection. It doesn't go perfectly in this deck, but it does work very good in other decks and it is generally just a very good card. It's a 3-2 with Menace and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile. One pile, uh, we get to uh, take into our hand and the other goes into our graveyard. So it's kind of like a uh, shell and cup game, whatever you want to call it, where you want to kind of bait them into taking bad cards by showing them a good card is my ideal strategy. Or you can do the opposite of that, right? And just try to hide the good card from them and show them two mediocre cards. And maybe uh, the mediocre cards are good enough for them to take. And then you're able to trick them from getting that really good card. We've got two copies of our Dyerge Bat. This is a 3-3 with Flash and Flying. Mutate for six, so it's a little bit expensive. And whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker in opponent controls. That's a very powerful ability. It's best played with Flash as the creature, and then we mutate onto it uh, with a cheaper spell, right? So instead of mutating onto something for six, we play it for four, and then we mutate something onto it uh, later on. We talked about Insatiable Hemophage for four, Mutate for three. It has Death Touch, which is, you know, just cool in on its own. It is also a 3-3, and whenever this creature mutates, target opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Again, I want to really, really push forward that this is a stackable ability, which is... It's good. It's good. <laughs> We've got two copies of Dreamtail Huron. Now, this is our first five drop. It's a 3-4 with flying. Mutate for four. And whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. Four copies of Pouncing Shore Shark. 4-3. It has flash, which is very cool. Both the creature and the ability, right? Mutate for four. Whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Single copy of Underworld Sentinel. One of the rares that were included within the deck. It's a 4-5. Whenever it attacks, exile target card from your graveyard. And whenever it dies, put all cards exiled with it into the battlefield. So, you know, there's no haste. It's prone to removal. But at the end of the day, just have fun. It's a cool card. And if you get it in the battlefield 
and you get it working. You know, that's just a really rewarding experience within that fun factor zone, right? Lockmire Serpent. This is a six drop with flash, seven, seven. Also one of the rares that came with the deck. It does fit in with the deck for the fact that it has flash, which is quite nice. However, you know, it's pretty expensive and we might be better off long term if you want to take this deck into the competitive scene and you're not really worried about uh, the budget upgrades, if you will, then drop this, get something better in there. The same goes for the Underworld Serpent. However, we can pay one blue source, sacrifice an island, Lockmire Serpent can't be blocked this turn. We can do the same for Swamp. You gain one life and draw a card. We can pay both an island and a swamp, a blue and a black source, to exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard to return the serpent from our graveyard to our hand, activating it only any time we could cast a sorcery. Massacre Worm, this is a 6-5, a mythic that came with the deck, which is very, very cool. Uh, it's great that we're getting mythics for new players for free. That's absolutely awesome. So when Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever a creature in opponent control dies, that player loses two life. So if he's got 10 creatures on the field, you just did 20 damage, uh, which is pretty cool because more times than not, the decks that have creatures with power two or less, or toughness two or less, I should say, um, tend to have a lot of them, like token decks. Chittering Harvester, we already talked about this. A 4-6, mutate for five. Whenever it mutates, uh, opponent will sacrifice a creature. And then these spells are accompanied by nine islands, 10 swamps, and 14 Temple of Deceits. We've added three more Temple of Deceits to the deck just to make it more consistent, helping us scry to the required cards. No sideboard, we are playing best of one today. Again, this is a rotation proof deck, which is very, very cool. Um, and the general strategy is actually pretty oppressive, right? It does fall victim to a little bit of removal, which is, you know, a little bit troublesome as we don't have a lot of protection here. If it's something that was really bothersome to you, it's easy enough to add to the deck to incorporate, right? A little bit of hex proof, maybe even protection. So we have removal, which is good, right? And a lot of it. We really want to prioritize our eliminates on things three or less, and then, you know, use our Batra on things three or greater. So we've kind of got all of our bases covered. Boot Nipper off the start is great with Death Touch. So you're kind of like stalling him. He doesn't want to attack. It's going to buy you more turns and let you get those mutate stacks of building. Late game, if you're low on health, it's great for lifelink. And then you can mutate onto it. So the bigger creature has lifelink instead of being a 2-1, maybe it's a 3-4, something like this. Uh, so that's a great way to survive. So whether you need to stop your opponent from attacking or survive the boot nipper is a great target to mutate on um, and just a a fairly good uh early game play obviously opening hands are two drops we really want the symbiote it will help us draw and cycle so we're getting to the right cards earlier on which is good but it also reduces the costs of most of our deck which is all mutate um so it's like a ramp spell basically so uh, you know, having a Poliwag uh, Symbiote in play is our highest priority. And then just going from there, really trying to stack copies of our Hemophage to kill our opponents. And then using stuff like our Shore Shark to open up our attacking lanes, uh, making it so he has to repay the mana to put those creatures back in play, right? Um, and then just hoping to repeat that process a few times to get enough value that we've won the game. Um, because we only need a few Hemophage uh, mutate stacks if we can get some chip damage in, right? If we get, you know, four, eight chip damage in, then we really only need uh, to get a few triggers of our Hemophage for the kill. It gets better than that though. We did talk about adding the Harvester into the mix where he's sacrificing creatures. If he doesn't have any creatures, we may not want to focus on the creature removal. We probably want to focus more on the card advantage aspect of the game. In which case, you know, Sea Dasher Octopus, whenever it deals combat damage, draw a card. Whenever the Huron mutates, draw a card. And then we still have the Baby Godzilla cycling to help us draw cards as well. Um, so with your general deck strategy, ignore the Worm, ignore the Serpent, ignore the Sentinel, ignore Atris, and just focus on the mutate, right? You've got your Baby Godzilla you really want right away. 
your C dash or octopus is really good if it's a control deck or some card advantage situation so you can keep drawing the cards you need it's also an amazingly cheap mutate trigger lots of the mutate triggers are expensive so if you want to reactivate your hemophage for cheap you can do so with only two via the C dasher uh, which is really cool and that can be reduced as well um, so very neat uh, with the C dasher octopus and the fact that it helps us draw cards or can potentially just be a cheap repeatable mutate trigger uh, later on once we have our stack established uh, and again if he's got you no know, creatures you go in with the octopus you go on with the Huron um, and then maybe play some of these fancy creatures and then if he has creatures you're pushing out with the short shark you're pushing out with the harvester to bounce them to his hand to have them sacrificed and then you have a little bit of spot removal as well fairy vandal gets plus one plus one whenever we draw a second card each turn that combos with the sea dasher octopus the sea dasher can be mutated onto the fairy vandal so it will be a 2-2 two, two. it attacks it immediately becomes a 3-3 three, three, and then it will continue to grow from there which is also a lot of fun right uh stern dismissal we can bounce anything for one it only costs one but we should use it later game you know maybe around turn five or turn six our spell goes to the grave where our opponent's spell goes to his hand so it's not good value for us there we have to neutralize or equalize this value by bouncing something that's expensive to his hand that he can't replay so he's just spent all of his mana for the turn we bounce it back to his hands he basically has done a whole turn for nothing and all we needed was one mana on his turn so make sure that you're bouncing something expensive or lethal with stern dismissal to help you win those games get that high value conversion there that's it there's not much to it uh that's literally it um mutate decks i have a lot of luck with i know some people struggle due to the removal and if you are one of those individuals you know sub in some protection um sub in you know hexproof protection from whatever color uh and then just try to go from there so i hope you enjoyed uh this little upgrade guide and general deck tech slash strategy overview uh we are going to get into some gameplay footage now but before we do i have to remind you that i'm live on youtube every morning at 6 a.m at 7 a.m we switch to twitch and then back over again at 6 p.m to youtube all mountain standards times links in the description below there's a link tree link that has all of my links within it uh, we also have magic the gathering arena assistant available for download in the description below check that out to help support me for free uh, again i appreciate your time and attention if you found any value within this video go ahead give me a thumbs up share the channel out to a friend we're almost at our 500k gem giveaway check out the discord for more deets on that yada 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 monthly brawl tournaments and artisan tournaments free entry cash prized uh, so you do not want to miss out on that either thank you to all of our twitch patreon on youtube supporters you guys are amazing making this uh you know a reality and something that hopefully i'm able to continue doing once our covid days ends uh it's getting close and i can almost sustain myself so i really appreciate it um and the whole community that's been enjoying the content does as well because it's not just me surviving uh it's thousands and thousands of people who've been enjoying uh, the content i've been able to create for them as well so a huge shout out to you guys from all of us here at hello good game thank you so much i hope you enjoy mutation station uh starter deck upgrade guide in magic the gathering arena again if you don't have the complete list just incorporate what you do have slowly upgrade it and as the weeks and months and sets go on you will have some of these decks fine-tuned and you know you shouldn't have any troubles ranking up with them completing those events etc etc so enjoy today's gameplay footage don't forget to watch to the end so you don't miss out on our closing thoughts take care opponent goes first our hand is very awkward you know this massacre worm how does that even fit in the deck you should just be able to try to play it Let's see if your opponent says no <laughs> the godzilla will very much help uh polywag symbiote aka We've got some knights on the opposing board state.
not really looking to lose it, so we'll just let him have the damage. Hmm. Let's see, what's going on with our internet here? Absolutely magical. Right, we're gonna bounce this worthy knight. We just have streamer mode enabled, that's all you guys, so we can uh, uh toss the serpent. Right, that can go to our graveyard, which is nice. Over top. Bounce the knight. And we hit for four. Right, he does probably have haste, but that's fine. We can double bounce next turn. So even if he... Hmm. Well, isn't that annoying? <laughs> right. Let's try it this way. This has flash, so we'll just hang out with it, I guess. Or we could still bounce his knight, but it just seems weird. Right? I love the shore shark, and I think that's good, but... I want that draw. We're at five already. We just need another swamp. We don't have any cards to exile from his graveyard. We can't attack or block. He's putting in a flyer, which is good. We should have bounced, I guess, before he made the token. I like the idea of Massacre Worm just wiping his field. There's no cards in the graveyard to be exiling. Ugh, annoying. That's probably a good card to keep, but... I don't want to toss the land. Knight goes back to his hand. Looking for a swamp. Good game. Going first is a splendid opportunity that we cannot pass up. Let's get in there, right? Stern Dismissal is active. We don't really want to cast that for one, though. That's kind of a, a late game. We want to be spending one mana to deal with like four or five mana plus. It's a one for one regardless, so we want to make sure that we get mana value from it because this goes to our graveyard whereas he actually just gets to replay uh whatever that was so the higher mana difference uh between the one and whatever his is the better value or the higher um theoretical ranking stern dismissal gets i don't know if that makes sense to you guys or not but if he spends five mana and we can reset it for one mana that's net positive gain for us Um, should we just go right for it? Or should we just take it slow, maybe? The creatures out it's never a bad thing, right? Kind of gets us around, uh, claim the firstborn, potentially. I 
hate these sacrifice decks. They're so hard to deal with. So we don't really want to allow it to deal two damage to our Vandal. Let's just let it hit. There's no spectacle, right? That's all rotated out. Just has straight up removal. Okay. Ooh. Kills both of our creatures anyways. Takes a double draw. Nice. Alright, that's not anything we need to worry about yet. Let's just go for it. Just one damage. Nothing fancy, but we do get to hit for three. I think that's nice. If we can curve into this Harvester for five, two land away, that would be nice. This Atris will help get us there if we pull our next land. Worst case, we can continue to attack and then just hit him with the Dismissal. Ideally, after he sacrifices something. He does, he goes right for the sack. Five five. The priest doesn't really benefit from that because it has summoning sickness. But you know, next turn it will. Right? He's gonna sacrifice this goat. So I want to hit him. But he's gonna hit us with so much. I think we still go for it. And then do that just a turn later. It's still a decent hit, right? We hit for seven that turn total. We get punished though, we get hit for nine at least here. Definitely need a land. Getting rid of our worm. Oh, that triggers the sack effect. Nice. Oh man, that's good. So we're getting hit for 11 minimum here, actually. And he gets lifelink. Stop it. He's getting hit for 12. Plus he gets lifelink. That's pretty groovy. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy that. Wow. Up to 15, 16. We're down to six. That messes our game plan up for sure. <laughs> In a big way. Oh my lord. He can play his Kroxa too. That's savage. He gains six life here. Deals six damage. We would have killed him without that life gain. We're up to 12.
He's going to play Kroxa. We're going to not take any damage. And we're going to hit for 5. He's got first strike regardless. We just have to push. Hopefully we get a mutate that wins us the game. It's not going to be our harvester because that costs 5 and we're only on 3. Could pull the 4. We draw. It's a land. Oh my lord, that opens up Stern's Dismissal. Woo! That helps a lot. So we may want to hold on to our Harvester if we pull that fifth land. Holy. What do we trash? The, the Atris, it has to be. And we have to just bank on pulling a land. Right? No creatures died. He can sack it though, right? Just mitigating a bit of the damage. We get the land. Good game. Oh my lord. It's so good. Wow. Top deck. Uh, there's nothing be better than top decking a land for the win. Feels good. The cards look good. Land looks bad. We have to toss it. This is better. Toss our Serpent for six. It's too expensive. We need a uh, cheap creature and a lot of land. Definitely need to pull a land here. I don't think he's dropping. Yes. Uh, not a land, but it does reduce the mutate uh, costs here for us. Still definitely need a land. Oh, That's so sad. I guess we try to pull a land by the mutate. We push up to three as well. There's the land, nice. Let's toss our Vandal. Take the damage. Here's our scry. Looking for our fourth land. There it is. We have a main phase draw. Kind of a desperate move. Instant speed. There's our land. a stackable ability so they each hit for two and then we hit for three seven damage total we have removal we have more mutate we hit or nine total if we mutate well yeah Let's just take it.
Then we'll destroy the other with our Batra. Oof, or the Shore Shark. I think both of these are great. We actually win with the Shore Shark. The added uh, attack. Land's good. Hand is just absolutely whacked out, but whatever. Hopefully we curve to six and can make use of it. Right? Three six drops? Gross. Moss Viper in the house. Interesting. Looking for some octopus. Perfect. Ask and you shall receive. Flashing this in. Then just going straight in with our draws. Hopefully he doesn't have removal. That would suck. We're not really concerned about removing it. Just a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch, who cares? Alright, the reach here actually is upsetting to me. We can't attack through it, right? It's just a bummer. He is removal. Gross. He taps the serpent which is fine, we can flash this in as a creature now. Trying to pull a land here. It's not the worst, we still need that land though. More removal. Lovely. Definitely need a land. Thank you. Play with Flash and kill the Serpent. A third ram through? Stop it. Oh, uh-oh. We need mutate. We get it, that's awesome. So we can have him sack one and we get to destroy the other. Um, Kill that one. Sacks the other. We hit for four. Woof. Woof. There's so many different, like, oh my, it just hurts. It just hurts. Woof. I don't really care for the land. This is better. We're gonna toss our Sentinel, I believe. Just scry and start looking for land the whole time. Nope. Any non-lands go to the bottom. Mm. 
we have our Vandal open alongside our Eliminate. Plays creature, we remove it if he doesn't. And we play our creature. We can Fairy Vandal and Stern Dismissal. Hmm, Piper's fine. I don't think we want to push that to his hand yet. We want to use our Stern Dismissal after Sacrifice Effect, I think. Again, just looking for land. No attacks, let's just fake defense. We weren't able to bluff him. He goes for it anyways. Scorpion in play. That's kind of annoying. Much like last turn, we have four. I really want to bank on the fact that we pull our fifth land next turn. I'm going to flash in Batra, or our Dirge Bat, if you guys don't have the alternative art. Dirge Bat? Dredge? Dirge? Either or. Potato Potato, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's still worth it to take the flash block. If he's got removal, he could hit us with it anyways. I think we're going to kill the scorpion. He does have it. Nice. Bomber! Let's see if we would have pulled our fifth land anyways. Yep. Wouldn't have that been fun. So, I think we still go for it, don't we? Nah. Let's play it smart. Hopefully he sacks some of these creatures. We can use our stern dismissal on the thing that he doesn't sack. And, uh, you know, we can go from there. We are playing 100% rotation proof as well. Down to 19. He's got two cards left in hand. Perfect. Yeah. Kills his scorpion. Hits us with the heater. Call of the Death Dweller could be really gross for us. Forbidden Friendship. That's not so bad. Pass to attackers. Bounce this to his hand. And we take out the Piper. No way. Nice. Yep. Let's just force the sack. And now we get a great defender. Hopefully he doesn't pull removal. Land, we're good. No attacks, we're fine. 
We need to pull Mutate off the top. Good game. I'm scared to keep it, but at the same time, I'm really excited to start uh, playing this hand. This is good. If we can pull a few more land, um, you know, especially said island in case we can't get this off with the Mutate. Temple of Deceit first. Perfect. Getting that land. That's awesome. Um, It's not bad. I think that's actually pretty good considering we do sit on two Sea Dashers. Alright, Jessikai on board. Spheres in play. We may need to stack our Shore Shark. Skycat Sovereign, sure. Nice, we're gonna flash in our Dirge Bat. Worried about removal though. Hopefully, he spends the rest of his mana this turn. Whoa. Why weren't we able to flash this in? Why did it just skip right past his end step? We should have been able to play our Octopus too. That makes me so sad. You know what I mean? What a terrible day. Let's just take our draw. Probably toss a Vandal or an Octopus. Does he have a counter spell? The land is good. We kind of need that. Defender is nice as well. Okay, kind of sucks. I mean, we can flash the bat in. We can make the token. That's our best bet, is to flash the bat in and then just start mutating onto it to kill his creatures. Down to nine. Um, okay, this could be worse, right? That spends all his mana. The scry two is good for him. And we can't block his attackers now because we're only at a three three as well. So he still hits for six, but we should be okay.
I don't think he's got any haste. We're pretty low, but, you know, let's just take our draws. Any haste, any burn spells, all spell disaster for us. If not, I think we've stabilized. We should have stabilized earlier. I'm not sure why it skipped that end phase there. Okay, good for him, yeah. Nice. So we have no flying. We have no way to deal with this. He's just got us. The short shark does it. That's awesome. Get rid of this Stormwing. Grab some life gain out of this boot nipper. Please and thank you. And we're ready to bounce whatever he plays. Don't you even dare. I guess we're not bouncing anything. Shoot. These Soul Seers have been saving him. All right, this saves us, right? What a top deck, what a top deck. We get that flying, right? We even draw a card. Stern Dismissal, stop it. <laughs> you know your boy's got to. Take our scry. Setting our stop before his attack phase. So we can bounce the storm wing entity. I guess we should have done all this maybe before because he could have a counter spell or something, right? All right, so he shocks us. Let's take the life gain. Draw that card. Take the other draws. <laughs> Poor guy, he thought he had us. <laughs> if you know me, you know how much I love the Pouncing Shore Shark. So we keep the hand. We've got our Vandal with an Octopus as well. Oops, that's still our turn. <laughs> I thought because he plays his land and then I looked at it I was like, wait a minute. How do we have two land? He only has one. But, uh... You know, he plays his alliance, so it's fine. We don't get punished at all. We go to 3-3 after the draw. Ugh, come on, bro. Why are you always doing this? We can draw a land. This worm could be pretty cool if he gets a big alliance going.
Must have a shock. Playing defensively. Our harvester is open. Armor. This guy. Looking for land for our worm. Kill the token. Hit for four. Another alliance, that's fine. We can keep the Shore Shark in hand. We can bounce one, kill the other. And then we still hit for four. And we have the Massacre warm up to clear the field. Ooh, Chariel, nice. Underneath. Takes his draw, makes all these tokens. Hit for our four damage. Oh, he's got the flyer. Whoop. Oh well. Jariel back in play. If he just knew. Ooh, Arrow's nice. This is a great finale for us as well. Two, four, six, eight, ten damage from the worm. Woof. Alrighty, Mutation Station, uh, Starter Deck, Upgrade Guide. I've been digging it, I like it. I've actually had a great time with all of these free-to-play decks so far. Um, just playing in the play standard queue right now, um, so we don't mess up our rank. We're chilling here, top 700 still. Looking to finish within the top 1200 this month so we can qualify. For the uh, you know the mythic qualifier invitational right so that should be fun and again if you are new to the game you're looking just to complete your quests have fun explore new decks check out all of the new free to play decks pick which one you like and then start to look at some of these upgrade guides don't worry about putting all of the upgrades in it immediately don't spend your rares keep farming your rares for zendikar just when you open packs organically from your quests you know, um, see if you get any cards that fit within the upgraded decks. Thank you for your time as attentions. I uh, really appreciate it. As always, we're live on YouTube every morning, 6 a.m. We are over on Twitch at 7 a.m. And then back again on YouTube at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard for all of those times. And we're in the Discord all day as well. We've got a 500k gem giveaway, free entry, brawl, and artisan tournaments every month with cash prizes all available to you within the Discord. And again, links for everything in the description below. Don't forget to download 
MTGA assistant, so you can take your gaming level uh, up a notch and compete with the pros within Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, you're going to love it. It's a great time. And if you have any questions about it, be sure to reach out and I'll be happy to help you with that. Again, a huge shout out to all of our Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters. Without you, none of this would be possible. Uh, you know, so unlimited gratitude coming your way from both myself and the thousands of viewers every day who've been enjoying this content. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, you guys. Take care. Enjoy.